This time on STV, we're starting our season here at the 35th annual Toronto International Snowmobile, ATV and Power Sports Show. Stick around because this is going to be a good episode and season. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 57 years. And by Polaris, think outside. The Toronto International Snowmobile ATV and Power Sports Show is not only the kickoff to my own personal season of snowmobiling, it's also the kickoff for us at STV. So that's why we decided to make this show part of our very first episode of the season. It's also the first year back for this show after the pandemic restrictions. So it's definitely awesome to see all the exhibitors and the crowds of people taking time out of a very nice fall weekend to attend a Power Sports consumer show. There was a little apprehension on both the management and exhibitor sides whether or not the people would be back, but judging by the numbers on the show floor, enthusiasm is as strong as ever. It was great to be back talking to the people who stopped by our STV booth and also catch up with so many friends in the power sports world. For me, it really got me into the spirit of the upcoming snowmobile season and this year for STV, we're working on some big plans, but we've also found some new plans that we've discovered here at the show, which is a great place to start your next epic snowmobiling season. Like I mentioned off the top, the Toronto International Snowmobile, ATV and Power Sports Show has been my seasonal kickoff for the sled season for a long time. Really ever since the days of the old Markham Fairgrounds where the smell of two-stroke mixed with the aroma of barnyard. <laughs> Things have definitely changed a lot in 35 years. This show is more than just a run-of-the-mill trade show. First off, it's presented in a city setting at the International Centre which is close to the Pearson Airport in Toronto. This definitely elevates the consumer experience because there's free parking, climate controlled halls, concessions and even carpet to walk on. This environment's also a comfortable one, allowing the consumers to engage with the exhibitors that range from corporate booths that have all the new machines, company reps and personalities of the brands, to the aftermarket suppliers where you can talk directly to the people behind your favourite shops to people from the riding regions all over the country that are there to help you plan your next snowmobiling adventure. Also improving the experience here is an indoor ATV test track for the youth rider training program and an inside stunt show. These riders at the stunt show put on an exhibition of talent on the ground or in the air. And if the noises and smells don't get your blood pumping or thinking about setting up a ramp in your backyard, well, nothing will. All in all, the experience here at the International Centre is slightly more corporate. Now, if you're looking for a grassroots type of event, there's plenty of swap meets like the one at the Sledorama Show in Peterborough happening all over the snow belt. The Sledorama Show also has exhibitor booths both inside and outside the arena grounds, and there's even a show and shine. But typically, the only new sleds you'll find in an event like this are at the dealership booths that are participating. Outside is where you'll find the swap meets, and even if you're not into searching for that elusive vintage part or a complete sled, the swap meets deliver a great trip down memory lane to the old days of snowmobiling. Checking out the eccentric stalls and vendors selling old memorabilia, you may find something you weren't even looking for, but that will make an excellent addition to your personal collection. Wherever you find this type of event, remember the early bird gets the worm. Plan on attending early and to practice your bartering skills for the best deal on the largest selection of junk. I mean, valuable rust. No, no, let's just go with good snowmobile stuff. 
Now, even if you don't buy anything at all, these events are another great place to get the preseason snowmobile juices flowing. Now racing is another way to do this as well. Throughout the fall months, grass drags are happening all over. The smell of two stroke in the air or the pop of blow off valves should be enough to launch any one season of sledding. The granddaddy to all these events is Heydays. This September event encompasses everything. There's all four manufacturers with corporate displays and all their new models, plus aftermarket vendors with their latest parts and accessories, and there is the most epic swap meet you can imagine where you can literally find almost anything at, and not just snowmobile stuff either. Need a bench seat for a 1997 Chevy truck? You can get it here. Power sports racing of all kinds is also a big part of the party at Heydays, and here you'll find some of the best of the best at what they do. The speeds on the grass drag track are simply insane. You really need to see these things in person to get a sense of how fast these sleds actually are. Heydays is also the place where manufacturers unveil their new race sleds or even some new models. So being here can get you a ringside seat to see the sleds for the first time in public. Articat dropped some of the biggest news of the industry this season at Heydays with the public intro of their new Catalyst platform, which was also on display at the Toronto International Snowmobile ATV and Power Sports Show. This sled is a game changer for CAT, and getting up close to the new chassis is another bonus for people attending this type of show. Everybody that has seen it has just been like, wow, that's a sweet looking ride, you know, and they're excited about it. A lot of competitive customers are like, yeah, that's something I think I want. And, you know, they want to demo it and everything. So we're going to do some demo programs to be able to get people on the sleds and experience what we think is the best value of it is just how it works. Um, but like this event in Toronto is just, it is so cool to see so many people. And I was just this morning, I was kind of walking around when the, when the show first opened up and you see so many people participating in this event and it's like, these are all snowmobilers. These are our people. And, and just to see that excitement and people come to the booth and ask questions about the new platform and stuff, it's just been, extremely positive, so it's been a real treat. The snowmobile season is a short one, and sometimes through the fall months it's hard to get in the mood. That can sure be the case for me anyways, but making the time to visit any one of these types of events I just covered really does kick off my season by resetting my brain from summer to winter. This year, here at the Toronto Show, is no different. I can already feel my throttle thumb twitching. Coming up after the break, we head back into the studio to do a complete afterburn on this bad boy, the Yamaha SRX in blue. This segment is brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. This time on Afterburn, I'm featuring a sled that's been seen here a couple of times, and I'm doing that for a few reasons. Number one, it's a great sled and one of my favorites to ride, but also because of the brand identity this machine brings to its manufacturer. And one last reason, <laughs> it's blue. It simply doesn't get any more Yamaha for me than the iconic SRX. This machine symbolizes the soul of Yamaha and sits at the pinnacle of their lineup. Since its reintroduction, the SRX has been positioned as Yamaha's Lake Racer Speed Machine. Built on the familiar SRV platform with the turbocharged 998 Genesis engine, the SRX specifically has been optimized for speed by shaving the lug height of the track down to one inch, which saves rotating mass and adds speed. And then Yamaha also lowered the chassis height by one inch as well, which improves the track's angle of attack at the front of the skid. And this modification also lowers the center of gravity of the sled, helping it stay hunkered down in the corners. The SRX also gets the IQS or Intelligent Quick Switch Fox Shocks. Now these babies are adjustable on the fly from the handlebars and are a simple to understand system with three settings, soft, medium, and firm. Now each setting can be adjusted independently in the front or the rear of the sled to further refine the ride, but at the end of the day, each position makes a noticeable difference in the ride quality, making it easy to tune the machine to your preferences or trail conditions. 
Now, none of this information is new. The SRX and its list of ingredients are well known in the snowmobile world, especially to Yamaha fans. And even though this model hasn't changed much in the last number of years, it's still one that sells out every spring during Yamaha's Power Surge program and holds its value in the used market. It's for these reasons I wanted to run the SRX through Afterburn on the show one more time. And there is a new feature for 2023, EPS. Now, electronic power steering isn't new in the Yamaha lineup. It appeared in the past on the last generation of Apex sleds, and then again last season with refinements over the original system on select 2022 machines, but was never included on the SRX until now. I felt this was a mistake, and I'm glad Yamaha corrected the problem for 2023. Last year, I just felt if you were the buyer of Yamaha's top position sled, the SRX, that it should have every option available in Yamaha's toolkit, which included EPS. Now, it wasn't too much of a problem for Yamaha in the sales department. They still sold every SRX that they built, but I am glad to see it on this generation SRX. The ride experience is definitely improved with the addition of EPS. And even though the sled isn't any lighter, it feels much lighter because of the reduced effort it takes to steer the sled, especially when you're hustling. And because the system is electronic, there is a variable amount of assist that changes with speed to prevent the bars from becoming numb in your hands. There is one way it could be even better though. It would be awesome if there was a soft, medium and firm setting just like the IQS shocks that would adjust the amount of assist the EPS system provides. In the automotive world, many high-end sports cars have this option on their EPS systems, so I know it's definitely doable. And while you're adding that feature, Yamaha, how about updating the gauges? I mean, this gauge package is definitely looking dated when you compare it to other manufacturers out there. And as I get used to those other packages that are on the market that include features like GPS and color screens, this gauge package is actually really starting to annoy me. It has to go. I mean, at this point, I'd be happy even if you brought back the old Apex gauge. Moving on from this one issue, I'm still drawn to the SRX over any other sled in the Yamaha lineup, and it does improve incrementally a little bit each season through improvements like the addition of the Strike Ski Package or the ARCS Front Suspension Package. So I'm looking forward to every version of the SRX Yamaha brings to the snow, and it seems like every other year it appears in blue again, which is good because an SRX should be blue. And that's all I've got to say about that. Coming up after the break, we've got more from the show. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. At an event like the Toronto International Snowmobile, ATV and Power Sports Show, it's a great place to go check out all the cool new snowmobiles or maybe need accessories or discover a new place to go ride your toy at. Behind me, we're gonna catch up with John Breckenridge of the Algoma Snowplan to talk about a trip the SDV crew took up there last year. Hey John, how's it going? Hey. In Algoma, the center of it would be, say, Sault Ste. Marie, but it goes as far east as Spanish, Blind River, Elliott Lake, Echo Bay, St. Joe's Island, Bruce Mines, and then when you head north, you have Chaplo, Wawa, Dubreville, Marathon, Manitowash. So through our district, we groom uh, around 2,200 kilometers of trail. So that's a big stretch for our 15 groomers. So you'll be riding a little bit of everything, like a lot of the trails are tight, twisty corners. Then you'll get into some open country, you'll run a few, little bit of power line, you'll run a little bit of gas line. So you get some open country and then you get some tight corners as well. But that is one of the major draws. Everybody likes to do a major loop, so they want to start out someplace and end up back and definitely not ride a lot of the same trails the whole time. So uh, it's always recommended. You know, everybody loves doing it. Uh, riding up to Wawa, you connect up to District 14, up to Hearst, uh, Cochrane, down through Timmins, and you come back through Chaplow and back through to the Sioux again. So 
It's a thousand mile ride. It's done in four days normally. You can do it quicker if you want, but it's a long run. So last season we rode from uh, Sault Ste. Marie up to uh, Halfway Haven and we rode a little bit of everything there and we had a little bit of fun back and forth but uh, and then we went from there, we went uh, up to Wawa. So Halfway Haven last year when we rode was up, they were open, everything was great. Um, unfortunately they had a few circumstances. I would recommend everybody still come and, and enjoy the ride. It is gonna put a little bit more stress on some of the people, but what we're telling everybody is carry fuel. We are gonna have new signage made for the trailheads at each uh, major location, letting everybody know how the distance is and that they should be carrying fuel because they're not gonna make it complete through the trail system. So, But the trails are gonna be groomed, as they always are, in excellent shape. So come on up and enjoy the ride. This is one of our warm-up shacks on the trail. Uh, it's also a safety shack, obviously. It has a fire in it, uh, an ax. There's a few provisions in there. There's also a emergency radio system that contacts dispatch and they can deploy whoever you need for uh, emergency situations. Algoma country is a region I've been to on multiple occasions, riding from the Sioux up to Wawa and beyond to towns like Duberville. And this is an area of Ontario I always enjoy, both in the winter and in the summer. Now it is a bit of a drive for some of us to get there, but what this region gives back to you makes the trip here worth it every time. The snowmobile trails in Algoma are some of the best in Ontario with a very remote feel to them and are kind of divided into two main areas. One in the south of the region, around Sault Ste. Marie, and the other in the north, around Wawa, extending even more north up the east shores of Lake Superior. If you wanted to stay and play a little closer to the Sioux, there's a bunch of day loops to choose from. The Sioux Highlands Loop, in particular, is one of the newer rides that'll wind your way through 169 kilometers of entertaining trails cut through the Algoma Highlands next to Lake Superior. This loop also offers an excellent place to stop at the Search Mount Ski Resort for an easy lunch before heading back to Sault Ste. Marie just in time for an evening out at one of the Sioux's many restaurants. Snowmobiling is a big part of the communities here and not just for us tourists. There is a passionate group of local people who ride and work exceptionally hard to build a system that's not only built for them, but for us visitors as well. Now this has built a system that links many of the unique small towns together where service can always be found with a smile. What I've discovered traveling to this area are people who are always happy to see a new face and engage with riders who choose Algoma country as their playground. Everywhere you'll go, you'll get that special welcoming feeling you really only get when you arrive to an area on a snowmobile. This winter, if you're looking for a new riding area, or maybe one you haven't been to in a while, you really should be putting Algoma Country on your short list of destinations to ride in.
This segment is brought to you by CKX. Things are wrapping up here in Toronto and we're about to embark on our next snowmobiling season. But before we get to that, I wanted to catch up with Rich Kehoe, our fearless leader in all this craziness to talk about this show and what's coming up this season on STV and OSM. Wanted to talk to you, Rich, about what the show was like this year because it's the first year back in a couple. Yeah, it was pretty exciting, Jeff. You know, not having that show for three years since 2019, you forget a lot of faces that you know. So for mm -hmm. us, it was like, it was very exciting to see a lot of people that we haven't seen in all these years. It was great to be with all those folks again. Yeah, you get to see all the snowmobiles at one place. I mean, you and I have been to Heydays a few times in the meantime and other trade shows in the US, but in Canada, there's been it nothing. It wasn't there. It's all quiet. So it's fun to see tens of thousands of people again coming out of the woodwork, hanging out, go hanging out with the vintage guys, you yeah. know, all the racing. But we had a great crowd. Uh, everyone was excited, enthusiastic. I think everyone's excited to be back, no matter if you're riding a, a snowmobile or a side by side or ATV. All the federations it's, were there, so it was fun. It was yeah, a great time. I mean, so much passion in the power sports industry right now. It's, mm -hmm. it's crazy, and it's wonderful to be able to see that at one place. I think this year on STV and with OSM Meg, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be a great year. Yeah, we're going to do a lot of traveling, you and I, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to see a lot of places that we haven't seen in a few years. Yeah. I mean, we spent a lot of time on the sleds the last few years, but this year uh, we've got a lot of rides, Jeff. Yeah, and we want to do it in a little bit of a different fashion too, because. I really want to bring out the old SCSI and get some time on the trails with that thing. So I want to bring this conversation to an end because it's the end of the show, but it's just the beginning of our season. So keep tuning into STV all season long because the adventure is definitely going to continue this year. Closed captioning is brought to you by Polaris. STV has been brought to you by CKX. Wear your passion. Best Western hotels and resorts. Ready to get away? And by Ultimax Belts. Performance driven, performance proven.